Welcome to Legacy Cast, where we talk about your story, your way, and what are you doing to make sure that people know about you many generations from now. Good afternoon, Legacy Cast listeners. I would like to welcome Lane Ballone to the program and, and all of my listeners as well. Uh, Lane, you know, thank you for coming in and spending some time you know, in your busy afternoon to come on the program and you know, talk about things that are, are important. Uh, welcome, brother. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for having me. appreciate your time as well. You know, I, I have to mention for our, our listeners that, that are not aware that you're actually down in Panama. So, you know, it's... It's kind of convenient that we're both central time because that, that worked out pretty well. But, man, you, you, got some, you got some nice weather down there. or We're cooking up here in Texas. Yeah, yeah. Panama's lovely this time of the year. And, uh, yeah, it's great to be down here and be on the show. Cool. Well, you know, without further ado, you know, we'll, we'll start uh, kind of talking about some questions uh, pretending to legacy, if, if that's okay. Since, you know, obviously, you know, as the name would suggest, with Legacy Cast, that's Kind of what we talk about, but it's not just talking about money, which some people might think first off, but it's, it's really, how are you telling your story your way? And that, that's what makes uh, this program special is because we don't just talk about, you know, like I say, the, the financial aspects, though that is a, a component, but it's, you know, what are you doing in your life, in your world that, that tells your story? Because, you know, ultimately we want to, you know, it's kind of our, our little key to immortality, you might say that. You know, when the things that we do today are going to echo uh, into the next generation and the generations beyond. So what is, uh, for you, Lane, what is having a legacy? Yeah, legacy is the result of meaningful hard work, and it's the result of that because mm-hmm. it's, it's everything that, that falls after all this hard work that you do in life. And mm-hmm. like you said and alluded to, that it's a foundation for, you know, not only friends and family, but for good people just to follow in, you know, after this, you know, as this path, Mm -hmm. um, you know, especially, you know, whenever I'm no longer around, um, yeah. So legacy is vitally important. It gives you a direction to focus on and, um, yeah, it's one of the most important things for me. Oh, excellent. Excellent. Yeah. I I like hearing that from people because, you know, it's like you say, it's, it's something that, that is vital because, you know, we're, we're here just for a short period of time, but there, there's kind of a, a higher purpose for us being here. And, and to me, you know, at least you know, both in my practice and in my own personal life, you know, building on that is, is a key component of really why I'm here is, you know, the things that, that I find, you know, to leave it better than I found it. Yeah, exactly. And, you know, I want to be a giant so that way other people can step on my shoulders and see further. Hey, that's, you know, I love how you put that. Uh, so obviously you feel that uh, having a legacy is an important consideration for people to just spend time thinking about. Yeah. Yeah. It's a, it, it's a framework that allows you to think long-term and mm-hmm. the, the more you can think long-term, the less the small stuff becomes and you don't focus on the small stuff. You just kind of get, you know, you get things done because you know that there's a bigger picture. There's an, a more important, uh, end state or goal that you're striving towards mm-hmm. and yeah, legacy gives you that long-term vision. Sure. Uh, so how do you correlate that into what you do from a business standpoint? Uh, so I help people reinvent themselves with travel. For me, travel has been a, a pivotal aspect of my life. Uh, 12 years ago, you know, I, I, I traveled for the first time out of the country and since then, I've been traveling, you know, 35 countries, six continents. And it's given me the, the perspective to help myself, help, you know, learn about myself and learn about others. And so that's what I help people do. I help mm-hmm. them uh, take their first trip abroad. And so that way they can discover themselves, discover other perspectives, and then bring that back to their own communities. And so, yeah. yeah it's all this kind of travel piece is all centered around everything that I do. Yeah. And that's a very important mission because, you know, especially here in the States, you know, we're, we're so focused on, you know, as some people call it, you know, the grind or the nine to five, you know, routine that they, they stop to, they, they fail to stop. And, you know, as the saying goes, smell the roses. They, they don't, you know, don't take time to, you know, experience life. You know, they're, they're so busy, you know, in life that they forget how to actually live life. And so, you know, what you do is, is an outstanding mission. 
Yeah. And so by kind of, you know, there's the saying of uh, stress plus rest equals growth. Mm -hmm. And if you're just stressing yourself uh, by, by the grind, as you say, and working hard, that, that rest isn't there and it doesn't allow that room for growth, just like working out, you know, like in the gym, you know, if you look at hours in the gym versus recovery, it's, it's lopsided, mostly rest, but you know, we only talk about that stress, that, that pumping, you know, pumping the iron, you know, so to speak. Sure, sure. And yeah, so I'm, I guess it's, as I guess I'm focused more on the rest aspect, but it's not only rest. There's, there's, it's, it's, um, putting your, the mental game into overdrive because travel just like allows you to step inside of a, like a, a new, you know, not world, but, uh, a, a steps you're stepping into the unfamiliar and when you do that, you're stripping all of familiarity around your life. And what you're left with is your true self, you know, like all the stuff that, you know, the, the work, you know, the, the friends, like that's all in your comfort zone. And when you travel, you're stepping outside of it. And so what you do as a reaction, whenever you're stripped away, when you're traveling is where all the growth happens. Oh, very, very well put. So if, if you were to think about uh, your business and its future from, from the CEO standpoint, uh, what would you say that the three things are that keep you up at night? Well, I, I try not to uh, keep, you know, stay awake at night, but uh, the, uh, the three most important aspects mm -hmm. is how do I reach the most people? But more importantly, how do I reach more of the right people at the right time? Because not everybody's, ready for this message. Uh, maybe they don't, you know, maybe they don't have the financial means to travel abroad. Sure. Um, or maybe they're not mentally ready. Maybe they're just like so focused on the grind that they just can't take away two weeks in order mm -hmm. for them to, you know, from their business. Um, so finding the right people at the right time is, is number one. Number two would be, uh, how do I find the right people to, to grow at the right speed efficiently? You mm -hmm. know, the right personalities, you know, with the right skills, and, you know, with the right vision, you know, how do I make sure that I, um, you know, all those team, you know, the team comes, comes together. So that's, that's number two. And then number three would be, you know, how do I develop the right product or service that people really resonate with? Because there's a lot of ways to, to tackle this issue, this problem of, you know, helping people travel, you know, and, and really finding the, the right way that resonates people with people is, is something that I, that I constantly think about. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and those are good answers there. Uh, do you, do you believe that it's important that people create a strategy uh, within their business and also in their personal life? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and and nowadays we are in an age of basically basically synthesizing life and business. You know, we were trying to sure. have them more overlapped, and and if they're rooted in a you know a, a meaningful set of principles that will guide you, um, that's, you know, that will give you the direction that will give you the, you know, when forks in the road happen, you'll know which way to go based off of these principles. And uh, yeah, so you know, principles of course are high level strategy. You know, we're talking macro picture. So, you know, that, and then, you know, this strategy, these principles are the genesis of you taking action. So I, yeah, I think it's vitally important. Important. <clears throat> So uh, given, given that, uh, what do you think the most common reason is that entrepreneurs fail or just simply give up? Uh, you know, it kind of ties into the strategy, but uh, yeah, not having a clear set of values and not really understanding their why, you know, why they are doing something, sure, I think sure. is, a, is a really big reason, you know, why they don't, why they don't mm -hmm. push, especially if, uh, you know, if obstacles come, come in the road. Um, they, you know, that, that why may, if it's not well defined and if those values aren't driving you, mm -hmm. then they may just stop, you know, then give up. Yeah, and yeah, you know, personally, I, I, I find that, you know, values really, you know, in, especially in my business is, is something that, that does drive a lot of things and, you know, people, people do need to keep that, you know, sort of plugged in, you know, to what they're doing, you know, both both on the personal and the professional level. Um, so yeah, so how, how do you, uh, how would you say that your values show up in your work and how would you advise others to incorporate that into their own business? Um, yeah. So, uh, you know, I, as time goes on in my life, I uh, try to be 
as intentional as possible. And so, you know, I've thought about, you know, the, the characteristics um, uh, and principles of how I live my life. And basically there's everything that I do is centered around uh, like these really, you know, broad kind of principles and, you know, similar to, you know, military organizations, they have creeds, you know, the army has the uh, leadership acronym, you know, the army values, you know, and other organizations have their, their uh, thing that really guides them into like, you know, what that organization's about. And I think that especially for transitioning people, you know, coming out of the military, uh, developing your own creed, your own set of values will, will help, um, help guide everything that you do, whether it's life or business. Okay. So, um, uh, as far as, you know, helping guide people, uh, how would you, uh, what, 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 um, what specific roadblocks, uh, would you say that you would advise new entrepreneurs to watch out for, uh, as far as that, that guidance there? Yeah. So, um, for me, and I'm still, still battling this is, uh, you know, how do I get, get more exposure? Um, because exposure leads to nearly everything else, you know, whether you're talking about marketing or leads or anything like that, that, that the more people that hear about your message, you know, the more people that you are, uh, that can, you can possibly help. And so figuring out how you can get more exposure. Uh, so that way you can share your vision is you know vitally important. Sure. So are there uh, specific, uh, support and resources that you would recommend, uh, an entrepreneur to look for? that helps uh, really kind of better position themselves for success? Yeah. I mean, there's, I mean, there's tons of resources, but if, if I could keep it, you know, simple, I would say two things, Mm -hmm. Uh, find yourself two different people. Now find yourself a running partner. That's basically, you know, on your, on your same level or, or, or right right around and then find yourself a mentor that's, you know, possibly 10 years ahead of you. So that way they've seen all of the, of the mistakes and they know, the advice to give you. So that way they're not telling you what to do, but they, they, they're guiding you in the right direction. So with those, with those two individuals, mm-hmm. uh, they complement each other and, uh, you'll be able to, you know, keep accountable from both spectrums, not only just from the mentor side, but the running partner. Right. And yeah, so yeah, those are the two, two biggest, uh, things that I would say that has, has helped me personally for sure. Right on, right on. So, uh, what would be something that that you wished earlier in life you had done that you you've learned now is vitally important that you didn't do? Is there something like that? Yeah. Um, so, and, and it goes ties back to exposure. Um, I wish I would have uh, have exposed myself to new and broad ideas as early as I could have. Like if if I if I could you know go back in time and tell my you know. 12 year old, 15 year old self, or even 20 year old self, uh, Hey, just, just go check out different ideas, different strategies for life, different, you know, ways to do things. Uh, and and then a myriad of other different subjects and topics, history and personal growth. But yeah, exposure to new ideas was, I think for me, I wish I would have done that. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, that and that probably you know for a lot of us you know we we kind of don't do that maybe based on on fear of you know rejection or or what have you that you know we get that head trash so to speak that you know we don't want to put ourselves out there but in fact you know people would help us if we just did yeah exactly <clears throat> so I'd like to focus on uh you playing a little bit here uh, kind of on a personal side, you know, as opposed to so much, you know, heavy emphasis on business, if that's all right. Yeah, of course. Uh, so, uh, especially like when you were transitioning out of the military and going into entrepreneurship, uh, there, there would have been, you know, obviously some hurdles, you know, during that transition period, you know, when we're getting out, we, we all sort of have our own transition stories, but how did you overcome that trans- transition for yourself? Yeah. So, uh, I tried to plan, uh, you know, as best as possible or, you know, best I could. Mm-hmm. Um, my biggest hurdle was kind of, was getting clear on what I wanted, you know, to share and, and to do, uh, because I have, you know, have travel experience.